Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the adoption of integrated reporting. Specifically, we will be discussing challenges to that process, to that adoption, benefits and its cost. Before we start, it's very important to look at what we learned about from prior sessions because this is a series of lectures about integrated reporting. We looked at integrated reporting itself and integrated thinking. And as a result, we produced the integrated report. We discussed value creation. We discussed the six capitals, the value creation process, the guiding principles. We also looked at the content of elements of the integrated report. In this session, we would look at the challenges the benefits and the cost and adopt an integrated reporting. So when a company says, when the company says, okay, I am going to adopt integrated reporting, make it part of my annual reporting. What are some of the challenges? Well, I, I do also have benefits and what are the costs? We will start by discussing the challenges. This is a significant shift when they, when they adopt integrated reporting because integrated reporting is fairly new. And that's the first challenge. If it's fairly new, it means there's not enough samples to look at. You're basically learning the ropes as you go along. And you must address several key challenges as you're implementing this integrated reporting successfully. Well, it's a new thing. It's a principle based, so it's not rule based. So basically they give you the guidelines and this is what we talked about in this session. In the prior sessions, it's a guideline. And they give you a little bit more of a content of elements that you have to, to address. Nevertheless, it's mostly principles. Also, what's involved in integrated reporting is integrated thinking. And integrated thinking, as when we talked about integrated reporting and integrated thinking, we said integrated thinking should come first, integrated reporting next. Well, in the real world, always integrate, integrated reporting comes first because you were just asked to adopt integrated reporting, but integrated reporting require integrated thinking before you start this report. So that's another challenge. Other challenges is materiality. We kind of touched upon materiality in prior sessions. We will discuss what's the challenges here. Data quality, assurance, lack of universal standard, the, ton, the tone at the top as well. Now bear in mind, I'm going to go over each of these challenges a little bit separately, starting with materiality, because in we, we talked about integrated thinking and the principle-based reporting in the prior session. Then we will discuss the benefits. Then we will discuss some of the cost, because in every decision you make, you have to look at the benefits. You have to look at the cost before making a decision. And in this situation, we looked at the benefit and cost in adopting integrated reporting. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Hello everyone. Are you struggling with your CMA exam preparation? Do you feel that your review course is moving too fast, too brief, or not covering topics in depth? Well, if that's the case, at Farhat Lectures, we can help you. We build your confidence through in-depth explanation, not memorization or reading the slides. What we will do is we provide baby steps approach to break down complex topic so you can truly learn, understand the material. How do we do so? We offer video lectures. We offer practice MCQs. We offer true-false questions. We offer exercises. We offer the notes. Understanding the material is the first step in passing the exam. Once you understand the material, you have gained the confidence to pass, and you can pass with Farhat Lectures. What can you do now? Start your free trial. You have a two-day free trial. Take a look at it. Give us a chance. Your risk is zero. You like it, you keep it. You don't like, you cancel. Give us a chance. We can help you pass the CMA exam. Starting with materiality. What's the challenge for materiality? We talked about materiality in prior sessions. Let's look at it. It's a clear definition. What's included? So what do we include in our integrated reporting? What's important to the users? So we must have a clear definition of materiality to make sure the report focuses on what matters most. Matters to who? To the stakeholders. And remember, we talked about sometimes they might ask customers and stakeholders what's important for them in order to determine that that item is material or not. So materiality refer to identifying which information 
is important, crucial to stakeholders, including both financial and non-financial information. And this is essential because integrated reporting follows a multi-capital approach, you know, financial, human, intellectual, all the capital, and not all information is equally relevant to all stakeholders. So we have to decide what's important and we have to make sure that we're including everything that's important, right? Because completeness is important. For example, a company that manufactures eco-friendly product might emphasize environmental data, which is the carbon footprint, as more material than financial data to its stakeholders, such as environmentally conscientious investors or customers. So what they're looking at, if they are the, the investors or the customer, they, they care about the environment, you want to emphasize that 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 capital, that, that eco-friendly product. Why? Because it's material for them. You want to focus on that because that's important for them. That's material for them. So think of materiality in the eyes of the beholder. But the issue is, who is the beholder? How do you determine that? That's a challenge, right? That's one of the challenges. And that's why we're discussing the challenges. Data quality, reporting non-financial information. Financial is easy. You have a lot of data. This is what the accounting information system generate. How about non-financial data? You might have some issues. Ensuring first enough data, accurate data, especially of non of non-financial in nature, which might be harder to measure, control, and control. It's just how do you do this? So high quality data is hard to get by for non-financial information. How do you measure this? Just as Companies have strong internal control for financial data. Similar rigor is needed for non-financial, and that's going to increase cost, obviously, to, to ensure we are collecting the data. For example, a company reporting on its employee engagement levels must ensure that its survey methods are sound and data as collected is reliable, just like they would for financial matrix like revenue and profit. So now what they have to do, they have to collect specific data about, well, the employee engagement. How do you create a survey that captures employee engagement. And this is one of many non-financial data points. So what's the data quality? How do you conduct the survey? And obviously, as I mentioned, that's going to increase cost without even mention that. Also assurance, assurance is audit. Having someone audit what you are stating, well, that's gonna, that's gonna have a cost. Providing assurance for non-financial data can be difficult and it increasingly and but it's increasingly expected by stakeholders when you give non-financial data no one's going to take your word for it especially potential investors or customers they want a third party you know a big accounting firm one of the big four audit you and they do provide those services assurance involve external validation of the integrated report think of auditors but now the auditors are auditing non-financial aspect. For example, your customer satisfaction. Well, you could say I have you know, the highest customer satisfaction. Yes, you as the company can claim that, but that claim is worthless unless you bring a third party, an outsider, to verify that claim, an independent party. So having a third party, also independent third party, audit these data points add credibility, though it can be challenging to do the lack of standard method. For example, a sustainability consultant might be hired to verify a company's environmental impact data, similar to how financial auditors verify financial statements. They're, you know, they're specialist consultant. They know how to measure this. They're independent, and they can give you a report so you can show to third party that indeed your sustainability effort, in, from an environmental point of view, is paying off, is making an impact. Another challenge is lack of universal standard, and that's basically part of what we are discussing. Organization must adopt multiple framework to provide comprehensive and comparable report. You have to rely on multiple framework. There are more than one framework that you could rely on as a standard. So one company could be relying on X, the other company on Y. There's no universally accepted standard for reporting non-financial reporting information, which make it challenging to compare report between organization. While the framework, the integrated reporting framework exists, many organizations rely on other, on others like the GRI and the SASB. What is the GRI? It's the Global Reporting Initiative, and the SASB is the Sustainability Accounting 
standard board. So one company might use GRI, the other company might use SASV. They're both acceptable. Then you, bet you make the comparison a little bit more challenging. One of the most challenging thing when it comes to integrated reporting is the tone at the top. Top management, the board of directors, of directors do they believe that integrated reporting is beneficial it's something good for the company if they don't that's a big challenge because they're not going to buy in so without top level support integrated reporting may fail to gain any traction so the success of the integrated reporting implementation depends on the commitment from the leadership the SEO the board of directors you have to grow that culture from within so a strong commitment ensures that the organization prioritize integrated thinking remember that's the most difficult thing across department for example the CEO who actively communicate the importance of sustainability in strategic decision will drive integrated rep reporting effort within the organization on the other hand if the CEO doesn't give any weight or does not mention the sustainability in strategic decisions then lower level management or middle level management they get the message that's not important now Yes, we do have challenges, we discuss them, but the benefits, always we have to look at the benefits. To promote the adoption of integrated reporting, you have to know the benefits. Although it's involved challenges and cost, of, of course, that's part of it, as I touched upon it, we're going to be talking about cost later, but you have to know the benefits of integrated reporting. One is linking financial and non-financial information, and this is the whole purpose of integrated reporting, better decision making and resource allocation, improve stakeholder relationship, employee engagement, lower reputation risk, breaking down silos. Let's start with linking financial and non-financial. Integrated reporting provide a holistic view and this is the definition of integrated reporting of how the company creates value by connecting financial to the non-financial aspect like sustainability, intellectual capital, or employee engagement. For example, a company can show how its investment in employee directly enhance its financial performance through increased productivity and innovation. So this is, this is a positive. You want to show this. Better decision-making and resource allocation. What is that? By linking various types of capitals, managers can make more informed decision about where the money should go for maximum value. A company can decide to invest more in renewable energy because integrated reporting, this shows that this has a long-term benefit for cost saving and brand reputation. So if you can see this, if you can crystallize this in the report and see it that renewable energy is good for our long-term benefit then we will invest in it so it's you are making a better decision allocating money allocating resources to the right department to the right place to the right division improved stakeholder relationship who are the stakeholders anyone outside the company AR helps improve transparency, fostering better relationship with, with stakeholders like investors, customers, regulators, anyone outside the company. So a tra transparent report on how company manages climate risk could build trust with investors who are concerned about sustainability. Remember, what you are doing is you are appealing to capital providers who buy in into your, into your with whatever you are doing. So for example, if they care about climate, uh, climate risk then the integrated reporting you show them that you care about it therefore they will invest with you more employee engagement employees are more likely to engage with a company that prioritizes social and environmental responsibilities and what happens if you have happy employees you have better product what happens if you have a better product you have your revenue will go up. A company that showcases its diversity and inclusion effort and its IR may experience greater employee satisfaction and retention. And as a result, better product. Lower reputational risk. Integrated reporting can help companies identify and mitigate potential risk, reducing the chance of reput reputable damage. Remember, part of integrated reporting is discuss your risks and opportunities. Well, guess what if you can address those risks you can lower your reputational risk a company that report transparently about its environmental impact is less likely to face public backlash or negative media coverage even if you are harming the environment now as long as you're aware of it and you're working on it at least you are aware of it you don't want to face a backlash later on when you don't report about the environmental damage and a 
a press person or a magazine or or someone does a research on your company and expose this so lower your reputational risk by saying look i am aware of this i'm addressing it we're reducing it it's for the benefit of the company it's the benefit for everyone breaking down silos why because silos it means people are working separately you want to break down the silos and connect them this is what connecting financial and non-financial integrated reporting encourages different departments to collaborate and work together which could lead to more efficient operation that's the assumption so the finance team and the sustainability team might collaborate on how environmental goals are impacting financial performance, fostering a more cohesive approach to reporting. That's, that's, that's another reason it's you break down the silo. Another important reason is lower cost of debt and equity. What does that mean? It means when you raise money, whether through debt, borrow money, or from investors, if you have integrated reporting, you have more transparency. Transparency lower the risks for investors and lenders. And when you lower the risk, well, they should ask for lower interest rate, lower cost of money. Because when someone wants to lend you money or invest with you, the more comfortable they feel, the less they charge you. But if they feel something is not clear, there's risks and they cannot see what's happening, to compensate for that risk, they ask for a higher cost. So by showing them in the integrated reporting, everything that you can show them, it lowers your risk. As a result, it lowers your cost of capital or the cost of money. A company with a strong integrated reporting may secure a lower interest rate loan as lenders have greater confidence in the company long-term sustainability. There's nothing hidden. You're not going to be exposed out of nowhere about some environmental damage that, that the company that the company uh, did and they have to pay billions of dollars the bank is they have some assurance that that's not going to happen as a result it lowers their cost of debt now addressing the cost of integrated reporting yeah, yes integrated reporting provide many benefit for sure as we just mentioned them but also you face cost associated with, with it with its adoption that cost has to be managed effectively so what are some of the costs? Well, kind of touch upon it when we talked about the challenges. Collecting and analyzing new type of data. You have to invest. A company must invest a new software system to gather non-financial data like employee well-being and environmental impact, among many others. Other costs could be setting up internal control system. Now you have new procedures, additional processes, and systems are needed to ensure the accuracy of non-financial information. Now you have internal control for this non-financial information, additional cost. You might want to hire additional people with proper, proper analytical skills. For example, organization may need to hire sustainability expert or data scientists to, ma to manage this, this non-financial matrixes. Assurance on integrated reporting, more cost. You have to hire auditors, third party. You have to invest in third party audit for their non-financial disclosure to add credibility to the report. Disclosing true could be but negative or competitive information. Sometimes what's going to happen is, and I, I was touching upon this as I'm discussing the challenges and the benefits is, you have to be careful what you disclose. Yes, you want to disclose complete reliable information but how about it's too negative or the competition take, can take advantage of that so a company may have to disclose less favorable environmental performance matrix which could impact public perception of itself but worst is revealing information that's harmful in a sense that the competition knows about it but if you the, the assumption is if you really, if you show this negative information now you're building trust through transparency that's the positive but you have to be very careful in what you disclose that's another cost that the company could face not not necessarily monetarily but indirectly let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com a company's board is reluctant to adopt integrated reporting because of the high cost involved Okay, there's, we don't want to do it because that's, there's a lot of money. Which of the following would best help build the business case for adopting? So what would you tell them? So you know what? Go ahead and we should do it. Starting with D, stating that integrated reporting only benefit large multinational. Well, if it's only large multinational, what if you're not large multinational? That's not a good thing. So, so, uh, so unless you're a multinational, we're not told anything about multinational, and that's not a reason that it only, and no one no one said that it only benefit 
multinational. It could benefit any company. Arguing that integrated reporting would replace the need for traditional financial reporting. This is absolutely nonsense. Integrated reporting combined financial reporting with non-financial reporting, so it doesn't replace financial reporting. Emphasizing that AR will immediately reduce operational cost. You cannot make that you cannot make that case oftentimes, most of the time, 99%, your cost will go up initially because there's a setup cost. As we talked about, you need new new software system, new internal control system, you need assurance, there's a lot of cost. B is not a good answer. By process of elimination, A looks like to be the best answer, highlighting how AR can reduce reputational risk. Yes, if the company cares about the reputation, yes, there is cost involved, but you are going to reduce. The benefit is reducing your reputation. So nothing's going to blow up in your face because you are disclosing the negatives that everyone should be aware of. Therefore, you reduce your reputational risk. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, look at additional resources, especially if you're studying for the CMA exam or any other professional certification for that matter. But this topic is heavily covered on the CMA exam. Invest in yourself. Farhat is always here to help.